for the time given. Thank you, Manni Jawar Sarkar Ji. Honorable N.R. Ilango. Yes. Honorable Deputy Chairman, I thank you for the opportunity given to me to speak on the Honorable President's address. Sir, the special address of the Honorable President is to inform the Parliament of the causes of the summons as per Article 87 of the Constitution of India. It is always expected to inform the Parliament that the causes of the summons, namely what the government was doing the last year and what it is going to do the next year. But I could see from the presidential address that what they were doing for the all nine years and what is that they are visualizing for the next 25 years has been given, but not the causes of summons has been addressed in the presidential address. Sir, a great thrill was said. Which means the mark of wisdom is to see the reality behind everything. With that vision, when I saw the presidential address, I want to make some mention about three or four points. Democracy and federalism has been dealt in paragraph 79. And I quote, India's democracy was prosperous, strong, and will continue to be stronger in the future. In para 79, it is said. Sir, the true federalism in real spirit and substance and not in ornamental form would be seed for vibrant democracy. Democracy have, be, have to be practiced, not to be preached, sir. Where all democracy has been uh, violated, I can quote, union shall not attempt centralization and should envisage decentralization <coughs> by permitting the states to exercise powers of legislation and executive. The representative of the union government in the state should act as a catalyst and their deed should be not, their deed should not be against the legislative democracy of the state. Delegation of power to state should be real and colorable intervention by the union, union would be destructive of the constitutional mandate of federalism. However, states' contribution to the development in various fields should be recognized and appreciated by the union for the sustained cooperation and federalism between the union and states. Sir, for instance, <coughs> the Nadu government, the Legislative Assembly passed a bill on NEET and it was sent to the uh, assent of the president. But for the best uh, reasons known to them, the bill is kept in the cold storage for a long time. That bill has not been approved, and various reasons are given by the union in not approving the bill. The governor of the state of Tamil Nadu is not giving his assent on most important bills of the state, namely banning of online lottery and certain bills which, uh, with respect to the university. <coughs> the assent neither denied nor returned, the bills are neither uh, assented to or not returned to the Legislative Assembly, kept in the cold storage. This is not only happening in Tamil Nadu, sir. This is happening in Telangana, this is happening in Kerala. How then do you talk about democracy and federalism? You have to practice de democracy, not only preach the words. Sir, the judiciary is concerned. Fair and independent judiciary is the hallmark of the civilized society. And it's common knowledge that the law declared by the Honorable Supreme Court is the law of the land and our Article 141 of the Constitution. Sir, Article 50 is given a complete go-by, and we are in the recent past hearing the highly placed executives are making certain remarks against the collegium system and the basic structure propounded by the Supreme Court. In fact, the basic structure is not propounded by the Supreme Court in case one of the Bharati. The basic structure is inbuilt in the Constitution. And making some observations about the judgments of the Supreme Court. <coughs> there is, there, we have to respect the judiciary and that is not being done. Article 50 is being violated. That separation of power is being completely violated by this government. And sir, the collegium is concerned. Twice we passed the NJAC bill and it was struck down by the Supreme Court by a recent judgment. If you have any objection to the, those judgments, you have to pass a new bill which can be acceptable by the Supreme Court. But making comments on the collegium system is not good for the democracy. And we are also saying that there are 
cherry picking in the appointment of judges. Collegium is recommending few names and union government is cherry picking few names and passing the orders and keeping the other names under the cold storage without assigning any reason and without any authority to do that. This is very unacceptable in the democracy, sir. This has to be replied by the government. Sir, one more affront to the democracy is all these schemes by the union government are named in Hindi. We are not able to understand the name or the intention behind the schemes. With all this, I say the union government is not practicing the democracy. They are not for, uh, governing with the democracy. <clears throat> as far as the corruption is concerned, at paragraph 9, it is said by the presidential address that an effective system has also been put in place to end practice of favoritism and corruption in the government machinery. Sir, you know, the people of India know that in 2018, this government has almost neutralized the corruption law. There are few provisions which were in vogue in 1988 Act. You have removed them and decriminalized most of the acts of the corruption. And naturally, corruption will come down, sir. <coughs> now, take 13.1D. There were two good provisions. The 13.1D has been completely wiped off. And you say now the corruption has been brought down. Yesterday, when Mr. Tambidurai was speaking, he said about something, the cases which were ended up in acquittal. But it is only during the ADMK rule. Tamil Nadu, not only Tamil Nadu, Kodar Nadu was also looted. Please, please. It is not a state subject. We'll see. We'll see. Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> right. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Sir, please. Sir, 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 please, please. Sir, sir, I have only two minutes. Please, please take your subject. Please speak on the sun. Sir, in you know he will not be raising a state subject. Please. Sir, sir. Yes. We'll see. We'll see. Please. Sir, in paragraph two. In paragraph two. The presidential address says about a Bharat which has no poverty and where the middle class is also prosperous. Everywhere they say Bharat in, when they are talking about the future. The discriminate use of the term Bharat vis-a-vis -vis India <coughs> stirs a speculation in the minds of the general public that a subtle design is envisaged by the union to proclaim India in future as Bharat which will prove the, to be fatal for the existence of the unity and diversity of this great nation, India. Sir, there is a Ekaleva model schools, about 400 has been uh, opened. We are very happy to know about that Ekaleva model schools. I only hope and believe <coughs> that this government, by not providing job opportunities to, to those students, taking the thumbs of those students <laughs> like Dronacharya. They have to give job opportunities to them. Sir, while coming to the women empowerment, today in Tamil Nadu, our Honorable Chief Minister, Thiru Muthuvel Karnani V. Stalin, is inaugurating the second phase of Pudumai Pin scheme, which is <clears throat> otherwise known as a modern girl or a revol revolutionary girl. Muvalo Ramamritam Ammayar Higher Education Assistance Scheme is being in vogue in Tamil Nadu. The government of Tamil Nadu has launched this scheme to enhance the enrollment ratio of girls from government schools to higher education institutions. Through this scheme, the financial assistance of 100,000 rupees per month will be provided to the girls till their completion of UG degree, diploma, ITA, or any other recognized course. This incentive amount under this scheme will be dispersed directly into their student's account. This is called Dravidian model, which is better than any other model, sir. Such a socially progressive schemes have not been introduced by the union for the better and prosperous life of the girl children. One more minute, sir. <coughs> sir, as far as the um, observations of uh, Prakash Javadekar yesterday, that <coughs> The artifacts which are available in the 
other countries will be brought back to the uh, India. I have a request to the government that a detailed report on Kiradi excavations has been submitted to the ASI on 30th of January 23. <laughs> One please, more minute, please, sir. Please, please, Mr. Amarnath. I request the government to publish and make it a public document, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mani Sanjay Singh, absent. Mani Manas Ranjan Mangraj. Mani Niranjan Vishiji, please.